Frontier just dropped some huge and unexpected details about new features coming to Elite Dangerous Odyssey and we're breaking them down right now. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe. Remember to click the bell icon and select all notifications and to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. Yesterday was FDev's regular Tuesday Supercruise news livestream and community manager Arthur Tolmy had hinted on Twitter to expect something. We figured the regular monthly developer update with a little hint at the future on the end and that is indeed what we got but it's everything else that dropped with the dev update and the livestream that took everyone by surprise. The reveals in the stream cover what to expect in the next update, update 8, to Elite Dangerous Odyssey as well as some big hitter features for further down the line. So what's coming? Firstly the team spoke about some updates and fixes that are scheduled to arrive in update 8. The team is currently looking at some optimizations around lighting. Further improvements will be coming to the anti-aliasing system and whilst the bulk of updates to the system that the AI uses to navigate around a settlement referred to as the nav mesh are in there are further updates coming in update 8 that should see substantial improvements to the issue of frames per second stuttering when arriving at a settlement. The team were at pains to point out as always that the fixes mentioned are a snapshot of the fixes and issues being worked on and it should in no way be taken as an exhaustive list. The livestream itself opened with a teaser video showing new features for update 8 so let's talk about those first. The first reveal was 4 person multi crew. An extra seat is being added to the following ships. Anaconda, Beluga, Corvette, Cutter, Type 9, Type 10 and Alliance Crusader. Finally allowing those ships to hold 4 players and not forcing the least popular player in a wing to follow on behind under their own steam. Next up we get to see the 3 new Odyssey engineers that are being added into the Colonia region. Later in the stream Arthur hinted that the way these engineers unlock is somehow different but didn't want to go into any more details or give spoilers. Then came one big surprise reveal. Emotes for the first person players will be arriving in update 8. Conspicuous by their absence emotes have been a much requested feature since Odyssey dropped and here at the Burr Pit we were very pleasantly surprised to see this announced. It also means players will be able to stop greeting each other with a couple of cycles of crouch stand crouch stand. A quick look at what was shown and a freeze frame of the emote wheel as it appeared on screen appeared to show that the initial round of emotes are as follows. Salute of course, point, wave, thumbs up, thumbs down, clap, stop and go. FDev did make it clear that this was an initial set of emotes and that more would be coming in the future. I'd be utterly astounded if the new emotes weren't available to purchase in the ARC store. That would seem like a fairly easy win commercially. There are 3 commanders in this house and we have at least 6 accounts in Elite being used on a regular basis spread between us. We've already contacted the bank about a remortgage. One very welcome and interesting point about emotes some of them at least are context sensitive meaning you can wave at someone specifically and they will see that you are waving specifically at them or pointing to a target will cause it to appear on your HUD and become tracked. Next up we get our first proper look at mega ship interiors. Arthur mentioned that not all mega ships will have interiors. The specific example he gave was that the rescue vessels seen at burning stations would not have interiors. Of the ships that do have interiors however they will have different facilities on different ships and at least some variation in the interior layout between them. The team mentioned in the stream that they can in theory be used for things like community goals meaning we'll likely see on foot community goals at some point in the future which was good to hear. This months developer update was released onto the forums at the same time that the stream went live. We've linked to that below and as well as everything we've just mentioned it also contains word that work has been completed to integrate purchased Horizons cosmetics into Odyssey. 
meaning all your snazzy leather jackets, trousers and boots will soon be mix and matchable with the new Odyssey gear. We were very pleased to hear that also. And finally for the update 8 stuff there are new additions and improvements being added to Odyssey missions that will add more texture and a few wrinkles to those going forward. The specific examples listed mention hostile agents attempting to intercept you while en route, NPC contacts you can meet at settlements and NPCs attempting to flee the scene via shuttles. Arthur did say there is more stuff being worked on in this vein so it appears this is just the start of this. We're very excited to see where this goes. The Odyssey missions as is are ok but they can feel a little flat and samey on occasions and it does look like they have intentions to inject more dynamism into the experience which was good to see. Ordinarily all of the above would be more than enough for one announcement or indeed one video but the team had yet more nuggets to reveal about what to expect after update 8. The first massive headliner, long rumoured, much requested and finally announced the game will be getting a twin seat combat oriented SRV. On stream all Arthur would say at the moment is that the new vehicle is very far into its development cycle even going as far as saying it is pretty much complete at this point and is now being heavily tested and we can expect a deep dive on the new SRV at some point in the future. As always as soon as we know we'll let you know here. The developer update didn't go into any specifics but there is work happening to add more variety and texture to Odyssey missions making the gameplay there more dynamic and the final big headliner again much requested by the community drum roll please fleet carriers are getting on foot interior spaces. We don't know any more details on that at the moment. All Arthur did say is that they have tested hyperspace jumping with other commanders on board and it worked. That would seem to be a minimum requirement. The secondary requirement being that none of the commanders were inside out when the carrier arrived at its destination because you know hyperdimensional witch space geometry is a fickle and complicated animal. Overall then a hugely positive step forward whilst Odyssey very clearly has some more wrinkles yet to iron out we are now getting more of a feel for what and where Frontier seems to want to take the expansion. This all coupled with the recent turret and NPC additions to surface combat zones does seem to paint a picture of rolling additions and updates to the title. This seems an obvious direction to go and honestly what we expected would happen but without it being explicitly stated by Frontier we were never 100% sure. It's extremely encouraging to see simple glaring emissions like emotes for example making an appearance. Again we'd assumed here that they would it seems an obvious win but until Frontier explicitly states that they've already thought of that stuff well you get where I'm at I'm sure. All in all we were very excited to see update 8. It's undoubtedly going to be a huge addition to the game and by the sounds of it we clearly have much much more to come. What was your favourite reveal from update 8 and what is your favourite reveal for after update 8 and what else would you perhaps like to see? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and maybe taking a look at one of our other videos linked on screen right now.